we are talking about horns today and uh, this is a very uh, complex educational subject because people think of horns only the traditional horn speakers but the horn effect is there everywhere so every speaker that you find is to a certain degree a horn even if it if it's not called as a horn speaker and and we are going through these uh, uh, class series about horns that I'm uh, I put together for you to to show what the horn coloration is, uh, what is the physics behind it, and how can you recognize it? And uh, as a speaker designer, uh, what can you do about it? How I just want to bring it to the consciousness that a lot of um, the effects that you see on the measurements of the speaker drivers and speaker cabinet comes from the horn coloration and not from the electrical properties of the drivers. And I try to make uh, these talks uh, very uh, simple, very basic language so that everyone can understand so if you don't know anything about speaker design uh, then uh, and you just want to educate yourself this is perfect starting place for you so when you think about it what is the horn effect just uh, speaking in the simplest terms with directionality comes efficiency so that just about sums up horns so when you look at it uh, there is only one scenario when there is no added directionality and no added efficiency and that's the point source and the only time this happens in nature is and uh, and not just in in speaker design but in nature is in the case of uh, plasma tweeters so when you have a blob of ionized plasma and it's pulsating and emits uh, sound pressure waves in a in a globe in every direction without uh, without breaking without a pause so so in this case when when the sound comes from a point source there's zero at the directionality to the sound and and the problem with that is that uh, you have or we get extremely low efficiency it's because the sound waves are spreading in every direction equally so it means it's like uh, you get 10 coins and in this case you spread your 10 coins even in every direction and not just uh, front and back left and right but up and down as well so so if if the center this is your source and let's say you are the listener right here then you just get a tiny portion of the sound waves coming to you the energy that is generated here only a tiny fraction of it gets to you here because most of it gets radiated all around and not just in in 2d but in three dimension as well so above and below the plane of your ears the sound waves are dispersed so you are losing most of the energy so while um, the plasma tweeters are thought about as as perfect sound sources but uh, this makes them imperfect because most of their output is just wasted and uh, the secondary problem of that is that because there's so much sound radiated in other directions in unwanted directions they are co going to cause reflections from your room so when you hit the walls then you are going to get problems so so that's a lot of uh, added uh, issues that that the uh, plasma treaters bring with them which are not as big when we are focusing the sound with other types of speaker drivers in that case the listener can receive most of the sound 
So let's see what I, what are the degrees of focusing the sound. So so your sound source can have a certain dimensionality. When it had zero dimensionality, that was the case of the plasma tweeter, of the source without any dimensions. So, so from there, the sound waves can propagate in every direction with the same energy. And then the second case is when uh, your sound source has one dimension. So it's like a string here. So you see, there is a string. And uh, for example, you can see it nature like for string instruments like a guitar or violin or a harp. You see, or even pianos, you ha they have strings on them. But, uh, but they are not purely string instruments. You will see that there is so much more going on with them. Because for all of our string instruments, the strings are not suspended by themselves. So it's not just like you have two concrete blocks and the strings suspended between them. If you do that and you start boing, boing, doing that, that that's the sound you are getting. The boing, 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 boing. It will never sound like a violin or a harp. It will just boing and then that's it. It won't do any, any sort of... Uh, musically pleasing sound and and it won't be loud either so the reason the guitar violin and harp they sound like they do and they also have the volume behind them is because they have a, a body attached to the string so in case of a guitar you you have this nice guitar body and the neck and then you have the strings attached to this body and when the string is plugged then the resonances of the string get transferred onto the wooden body which is a three-dimensional sound source and that amplifies and changes those initial resonances and and that that's what you perceive as a guitar sound and it makes them focused and much louder because of that focus and and that focus is basically a horn effect but we'll look at it a little bit later so going back to one dimensional sources there is only one one dimensional source in nature uh, that's the lightning so when there's a lightning strike then there is just a straight bolt maybe it's it's a it might might be a little bit curved but it's like one string but that string is, is sometimes straightened out sometimes a little relaxed so the lightning bolt can have a little compliance to it but it's always one string and uh, and basically it's, it's a gigantic plasma tweeter a lightning bolt because of those uh, tens of millions of volts uh, differential between the end, two ends of the lightning bolt, there's, there's an ionized plasma arc created. And that plasma arc, as it, uh, as it discharges, as it dissipates, it creates that sound effect that we know as thunder. And uh, the, the problem with that is that uh, the one-dimensional string, it cannot produce uh, much efficiency and in the case of lightning it's so loud because there is tremendous energy behind it so so when you throw tens of million watts and many 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 thousands of amps behind it then uh, then yes you can get tremendous sound pressure levels but even in the case of lightning the fundamental frequency is 100 hertz so you are not going to get a uh, lower sound. So even though you feel that it's a really deep rumble, it's just 100 hertz plus some upper harmonics. And if we want to get lower frequencies than 100 hertz, uh, so you see, in the, in the case of lightning, we are throwing like uh, millions of watts behind it, and it still cannot give us lower than 100 hertz. So... 
So the thing with that is actually that the lower you go in frequency, you more power you need and the bigger generator. And and if you have a, a plasma generator, which means a point source, you only can have uh, very high frequency sounds coming from it. If you have a string, in the, in the case of lightning bolt, you can go down to 100 hertz. But but those lightning bolt strikes are like miles long, tens of miles, maybe a hundred miles long, and even with that gargantuan dimension, you cannot go below 100 hertz. If you want to go below that, then you go need to go to the two-dimensional uh, radiator. So when when your sound source has two dimensions of it, basically, it's it's like a piece of paper. And those are known to us as, for example, the ribbon tweeters or the quads. So, so those types of speakers, when you have a charged surface and the charged surface is moving forwards and backwards, the planar drivers, those are two-dimensional sound sources. And with them, you can go lower, much lower than 100 hertz in frequency. But because they are planar, they do not have a three-dimensional extra quality added to them. So they are just like a piece of paper like this, but they are not curved. So it means when they move up and down, when, th when they push the air, the air is getting pushed away from them. So they cannot focus the air to move forward. So they are pushing the air to the side. As, as they move. So the air does this. And that's why they have lower efficiency. And, and, th and they need uh, high power amplifiers to make them move more. Because they need to make much bigger movements than a cone speaker to be able to move the air to the direction of the listener because they just move it more to the side than to the front. So, so when we go to three-dimensional, so going back to that, because they move it to the side, uh, they, they have much less directivity, so, so the dispersion pattern is, is very different which dispersion pattern means how the sound wave propagates. However, so theoretically, you would think that when you have a, a planar speakers, because they do not have directivity, uh, that's why then uh, you would be able to sit anywhere in the audience and it would be the sweet spot. However, it doesn't happen that way because... Um, Wow, that's a long story for another talk. So let's jump jump ahead of that and let's jump to the three-dimensional sound sources which are your ordinary everyday electrodynamic speaker drivers which look like this. They have a cone and the, and the cone is not flat so this is not a flat surface but it looks like an ice cream cone so it has a depth so when you look at it in the center where you see the dust cap, it, it, it has a, a narrow throat. And when outside you see the surround, and that that is the big mouth of our speaker driver. And then we have the basket, the metal frame around it, and that gives the total size of your speaker. And that's going to get mounted onto the surface of your speaker and this cone allows the air to be more focused so when when the driver moves forward the air is pushed uh, not not sideways so it helps to cup the air to keep the air moving forward so it gives directionality to the air movement and when uh, it gives directionality, that's already quite a bit of, uh, of a horn effect. So when you think about it, when we had zero dimensionality, then the sound extend, expanded in every direction. 
when we had one dimension then the sound expanded just towards the sides in either direction and when we had a surface like like a planner tweeter or ribbons or any other planner driver then then it makes the sound move either front or back so behind and and in front of the of the planner tweeter and when we have uh, a cone like like for example we had for our any of the drivers that we use in our electrodynamic speakers then it helps the air to move in in this fashion so basically pushes the air forward and that works in a stereo setting because traditionally let's say this is our living room and you have one speaker here another speaker here and the listener here right so in that case you want to direct the sound at the listener we do not want to direct the sound here or here or here or there because there is just being lost and and frankly with current technology we do not have the luxury to waste the sound because that demands additional power from the amplifier and if we can direct the sound towards the listener then we can get by with those power level amplifiers and those type of speakers we have uh, quite well so when we look at at a normal speaker then they have a certain angle to their ice cream cone to the driver and and the most extreme angle is when the sides are parallel so if we have a, a speaker driver here so there's like a membrane that's going up and down and 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 the sides are parallel so we place a cone at the end then this cone will really focus the sound to move in a straight line straight ahead so it, it it's basically like a gun so you can point the sound somewhere and where it is pointed there it will be very loud but if you are on the side let's say you are here or there or here then you will hear barely anything because there will be no output or very little output there and the price to pay for for the fact that you have a very loud sound pressure at the direction where it's pointing is that you will have an extremely narrow frequency bandwidth because when there is a focusing device which we call a horn in front of a driver then the frequency range will be defined by the throat so the throat is that part of the horn which is next to the sound source and it's and that's the highest frequency that your horn will amplify and the other frequency the lowest frequency is defined by the mouth and the mouth that's the far side of your horn and if the mouth and the throat are the same size then only very limited frequency uh, will be available on the output and ba so basically you get one octave range that is useful and that's why if you if you get a cone and you, you wrap it around then it will sound like this because very little frequency response will be available to you but it will be extremely loud so you will gain the most efficiency that way for a very narrow band and um, that's how ports work also and that's why when you have a subwoofer or, or just a port in your speaker it works effectively for only one octave range uh, because that's that's how ports behave they let through they are a window which let through and not just let through but focus one octave uh, range of energy 
and uh, and if you use it as a port in your speaker then below that one octave and above that one octave they are closed windows but we'll talk about that in another talk so the second horn profile is a cone and that's like we, you see here it's a megaphone so for the megaphones uh, they the longer they are the greater efficiency they provide and it's because <coughs> excuse me so here we have the throat of the horn and here we have the mouth of the horn and <coughs> and here we have the length of the horn so the throat gives lowest frequency highest frequency and the length give you efficiency so the longer your horn is the bigger the horn effect and that's because it takes a longer path for the air to stay focused <clears throat> and and that's because um as as the sound waves um go from the source they leave the source they just disperse in the air and lose energy extremely fast but if you keep them together contain them in a device then their energy keeps stays focused and it does not disperse and the longer it stays focused the the more directivity it will gain and the more uh, sound pressure will be available so that's why a single chap without any amplifier hooked up to him using a single megaphone can uh, uh, can talk to an entire football field <clears throat> and the second type when we when we open our or horn even more we reach a cone so you see these are basically all kinds of speaker drivers uh, that we have in our speakers and all of them are basically very short very brief megaphones so instead of having like a, a six feet length for the megaphone the megaphone is just a few inches maybe an inch long or even less but it's still a megaphone it's it's an opened up short megaphone and either if you look at a tweeter that's still a megaphone or you look at a six inch driver you still have the cone there megaphone you look at a 10 inch driver megaphone or maybe a 15 inch sub you get megaphone so it means that they have their own colorations that they add to the sound so if you are an electric engineer and you see a frequency response curve for your driver part of it is because of electrical parameters but a significant portion comes from the fact that you are dealing with a cone with a horn so every driver has a horn coloration added to it and let's look how that works so when you look at a, a typical driver in the center we have the dust cap and then we have the cone material and at the edge here this thing the rubber thingy around it that's the surround that attaches the cone to the basket so that makes sure that it doesn't fall off but it, it keeps focused so it can move up and down without any distraction however as a secondary effect it also acts as a barrier to the sound that it's being moved by the cone of your driver so basically as it moves back and forth the 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 air is getting moved out getting pressed out from the cone and and these air pressure waves are expanding to the side to the front and to the side at the at an angle which is defined by the speaker cone itself however when when these expanding waves reach the surrounds reach this uh, this 
blob, <laughs> which looks like a blob in, in 3D, then they will change direction. So let's use a blue color here. So, th so the air pressure is coming this way and it's forced to change direction so it move to get more focus to the side. So it cannot expand uh, out normally, but it will just get <coughs> truncated. And this will impact the efficiency and the directionality of your speaker quite a bit. And when you look at uh, the frequency response curves of the drivers, uh, this effect that, that, that they are cones and, and the surround at the blob, and also, al almost ev in every case, the drivers are mounted on top of your buffer so it means that the front panel of your speaker is underneath the buffer so so the width of the metal of the basket is on top of your speaker and it protrudes and uh, and that also adds a little bit of extra horn coloration but we'll look at it in our next episode and when you go to the most perfect version of the horn is when you have an exponential horn so this was the conical and now exponential is when you have a, a, a long and narrow neck and to make it useful in the case of a, of a horn like, which is an acoustic horn like, like a french horn or a trumpet or any other brass instrument they usually just wind it up like make it into circles because if it would be straight it would be so long that uh, your french horn player would be playing from the uh, you know bathroom or some some other room of the concert not in the concert hall and and as as it uh, as as the length expands then the horn will expand as well so at the very end you see that the diameter becomes bigger and bigger and at the very end it suddenly flares up to quite a bit of degree and this this sort of geometry with that long neck and then 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 slowly expanding and expanding in a really nice curved fashion this gives the most perfect response and the most efficient most perfect coupling of your energy source which is the guy blowing the horn to the air of your room and that's why these brass instruments are so loud and that's why your saxophone is just so incredibly loud because it is a perfect horn so it can it can amplify uh, I would say it doesn't amplify the sound but it focuses the energy uh, of those uh, waves which are starting from uh, from your mouth and the benefit of such a horn profile is that uh, there's very low coloration added to the sound so so when we go to speakers and we want to get an efficiency like that then there are these horn profiles that people typically use and most people think that these are the only horns so if it looks like that it's a horn if it looks like like a regular 8 inch driver that's not a horn but as, as you have seen even your regular 8 inch driver has horn effect added to it but only to a limited frequency range so so it has horn coloration and these are which are the proper horns uh, these add the horn effect to a much wider range of the frequency and to a much greater degree the easiest to do is like in the case of this Artec horn is to have a narrow neck and then a linear expansion so it's, it's roughly straight and, and then the sides here are straight as well and then an extra little buffer here at the end so so it's made this way because that's the easiest to make so the next thing which is harder to make is that the whole thing you see uh, my drawing is not good but it's curved so the sides are curved 
so so the better the curving is and the smoother the transition is the better the horn effect is so it means that you will have less coloration from your horn because the frequencies are affected uniformly so if there is a break like here in in the in the shape of the horn then the frequencies will not be amplified uh, to the same effect so certain frequencies uh, will have better ampli amplification higher efficiency compared to others and and this way when when the horn is nice and exponential that's when you get the smoothest uh, horn response and of course you can do this not just for a, for for a, for a tweeter but you can do it for a, a big driver like here like a 15 inch driver in that case you put the horn in front and you see there is this exponential nature coming here by by framed by that horn the price for that that it's it's this is huge humongous and and you would think that that horn probably goes down to 10 hertz no it goes down to about 100 hertz or so um, so that's why for bass uh, to have horn effect below 100 hertz you need surreally huge gigantic cabinets and the only however you can get around that by using your room as your horn so you can design your speaker in such a way that the room becomes the continuation of your horn and in that case you can uh, you can have a horn response down to very low frequencies so thank you for um, hanging on and we will continue and look into it in greater depth